I did say that uh, the next few minutes are proudly brought to us by Institute for Young Women Development. And I will be speaking to five amazing women. And I already have two of them on the line and uh, the others will be joining us in just a bit. I have on the line Glennis Changa Chirere and she's the team leader at Institute for Young Women Development. And uh, she's on the line with me. Let me just quickly say good afternoon to her. Good afternoon, Glennis, and welcome to Capital 100.4 FM. Thank you very much, and a good afternoon to you, and good afternoon to our listeners. And as well, I have uh, Honorable Lindy Wemaposa on the line. She's a member of Parliament, and uh, she joins us for this conversation. Honorable, good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, good afternoon, afternoon everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm glad to be part of this discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now uh, I will uh, jump to Glanis here. And uh, maybe you can briefly tell us about the work that you do at Institute for Young Women Development. And uh, this is in as far as strengthening feminist leadership is concerned. Um, thank you very much, uh, Lee. So at the Institute for Young Women Development, you know, we are a feminist organization that is working to promote the participation of young women in key decision-making processes, including politics. Um, We work predominantly with young women between the ages of 15 and 35, and our work really focuses around strengthening, you know, what she said, feminist leadership uh, among young women. And we are targeting, you know, um, young women who are found across, you know, the leadership spectrum, be it, you know, from um, the grassroots level, you know, at community development platforms, to world uh, level leadership, you know, to parliament, um, and even, you know, in other public spaces, including in commissions, as well as in public administration. And as we do that, we uh, conduct a lot of processes um, to really strengthen the agency of young women. We do trainings around feminist leadership to say what is feminist leadership, how does feminist leadership offer an alternative um, you know, to the current, you know, forms of leadership that we are seeing. And we also facilitate engagement and dialogue platforms for young women to be able to interface uh, with different uh, leadership positions as well as platforms so that they start to practice it and see the reality of, you know, leadership uh, and so that they can then, you know, step up and occupy, you know, different positions. Um, we also, you know, support young women as well with economic interventions because we do believe that um, financial independence, you know, for women really plays a part in contributing towards strengthening their voice and capacity, you know, in leadership. Those are some of the things that we are doing at the Institute for Young Women Development. Beautiful stuff. Now, as well, I think uh, we've uh, been talking about uh, devolution for some time now. How are you? as the Institute for Young Women Development talk, uh, um, doing this and as far as advocating for gender parity in the whole discourse around the devolution process? Um, so at the IYWD, currently we are seized with work around um, advocating, you know, for 50-50 representation of women um, and young women. And we are calling... Um, you know, for 25% of whatever, 50% that women get in different decision-making positions to go towards young women below the ages of 35. And similarly, you know, with the same concept, we are also looking at the current program that the government is rolling out, which is the program of devolution, where we are also saying because the constitution provides for 50-50 across all levels of decision-making, Devolution is one of the core and fundamental programs that aims to address, you know, different structural uh, challenges that women face, you know, on a day-to-day basis, be it issues around access to water, access to natural resources, access to health, and and many other, you know, services that um, we require on a day-to-day basis. And we are saying devolution therefore provides that opportunity for us to come in and say, how do we shape development at the local level and how sh- what role should women play you know to be able to influence um that development so since 
2019, we have been carrying massive awareness raising programs around devolution, where we're educating communities, uh, you know, in rural farming uh, and mining areas, uh, mostly targeting women and young women. Uh, just to educate them around what the constitution says about devolution, what it is, the benefits, and the need for us, you know, as uh, as women and young women, to be able to participate in that program. And we have also taken advantage uh, of uh, the government being on the ground as well on that program to really hold them accountable, you know, in terms of our participation, seeking where women are located, how the government is unveiling opportunities for young women and women you know, to influence devolution, as well as looking at direct, you know, uh, policy perspectives that they're trying to um, incorporate in the implementation of devolution that seek to ensure that women will be part of devolution in a much more meaningful as well as practical um, way. Beautiful stuff. Uh, I think in just a bit, I'll also bring in uh, Honorable uh, Lindy Wemaposa into the conversation. But before I do that, uh, Glennis, maybe uh, let's look at us commemorating International Women's Day. What message do you have, especially for government as well as young ladies out there, regards everything to do with uh, leadership? Um, so today we're really inspired by the messages that you know uh, are buzzing across uh, the different groups of women uh, world over. So these are words that are informed by the current, um, or rather this year's theme of International Women's Day. Some have chosen to go with a very bold statement of we choose to challenge. And others have also chosen to go with a theme that says women in leadership, uh, reshaping, you know, um, post-COVID-19 future for women. And I think for us as IYWD, acknowledging the realities of young women that we work with, and how they've been affected by the pandemic. Honestly, we are, you know, excited to say that we are also saying that we are bold um, in choosing to challenge different systems and um, structural arrangements, you know, in our communities, at the country level, at the national level, at the local level, that have contributed, you know, towards the immense challenges that we have faced because of the pandemic uh, as women. So we are challenging patriarchy, we are challenging authoritarianism, we are challenging, you know, different ways in which we have been, you know, excluded as women uh, in different decision-making processes. And we are saying in shaping a post-COVID-19 future for women, what we want to see is actually the 50-50 representation of women in all decision-making spaces. And 25% that goes to women, 50%, out of the 50% that goes to women, Mm. we want 25% to go towards young women below the age of 35. And we are making this bold statement because we are acknowledging that where we are as a country, where we are lacking a lot of things, public service delivery, um, you know, gender-responsive leadership, A lot of things, it's because women have historically been excluded. And COVID-19 has really amplified, you know, the challenges, those Mm. challenges and how women are vulnerable. And so we are saying it's an opportunity for us uh, to convince our government to challenge and to demand that they ensure that women are part and parcel of all processes from now going forward. Beautiful stuff, uh, Honorable Lindy Wemaposa, into the conversation as well as uh, a little later, Constance Mushai, a young woman, to talk to us around what we're talking about here. Uh, we'll also have Shamiso Gotami joining us and Mary Pangiti. So I will have to let you go. But before I do that, uh, how do people get in touch with the Institute for Young Women Development? Um, we are uh, contacted through our mobile numbers. Plus two six three seven seven two four eight one two seven three, and uh, the other one is plus two six three seven one eight two nine zero three zero one. We are also available on uh, email. Um, it's Young Women Institute at Gmail dot com. Um, and we are also on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at Young Women In, and we are also very much present on Facebook, uh, where we use um, 
um, the name um, Muzumai Wechidiki. Uh, we also have a website where people can take a look at the work that we are doing and, um, you know, come in different ways to support uh, that work. Our website is www.youngwomeninstitute.net. And thank you so much, Glennis, for joining us today. And uh, do enjoy the rest of your day. And let's continue to change the narrative and let's continue to engage. And remember, together we can. Thank you very much. And happy Women's Day to you and all the women out there. Thank you. Happy International Women's Day to you too. All right, I was speaking to Glennis uh, Changa Chirere. She's a team leader at the Institute for Young Women Development. And uh, they are the ones that have brought us this particular special program as we celebrate International Women's Day. Honorable Lindy Wemaposa is on the line with me as well. Honorable, uh, maybe... Uh, to, to, to start off, I would want to know what does International Women's Day mean to you as a woman? Okay, uh, thank you very much. My name is Linda Maposa. You already said, and I have a mem- I'm a member of parliament for Matibelele and South Constituency. It will also interest you to know that also an alumni of, of, of IY, and I'm the still see them uh, doing great works and um, conjecturizing women in terms of um, e- equality. Well, to me, International Women's Day um, is a time for me to reflect on how we've come as women. I know we've been lamenting challenges. I know we've uh, been lamenting how we are left out, how patriarchy has let us down, how we pull each other down, how things are not working. But for me, this year, 2021, I said, let me look at the good things that have happened to us as uh, women. We have managed to group, we have managed to fight with with one voice, we have managed to celebrate each other. We are victorious. So to me, I want to take this day as a celebration to to bold and strong women we have made it even through, uh, even if we have these challenges that I have mentioned. Women, we have risen even uh, above what everyone uh, we, we were expecting them to be, but they have raised, uh, they, they have raised their bar above all the challenges. So I say to myself, to uh, the, the day is actually for us to to congratulate ourselves as women to say, even though it was hard, even though. Uh, there were things that were saying uh, women cannot do it. We have managed to do it. We have managed to fight for spaces. We have managed to make awareness to say, look, we have been left out in here uh, in these spaces. And even uh, government itself has been able to hear our clarion call uh, with evidence of the president councillors in Victoria for admitting that women were being left out mm. and saying from now going to be talking of 30% of representation uh, in councils uh, across Zimbabwe. So to me, it's another achievement that we have made. We also have made a clarion call to say we need to see women in um, influential decision-making both CEOs, like the ministers, the deputy ministers. And if we look at it, how um, this is now being done, how appointments are now being done, agenda is now being taken out of because of the crisis of the push that we've been doing mm-hmm. so i say uh, I, 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 today makes me look at the achievements that we have been um we have um achieved throughout even if you look in the world how women are coming up how women are doing a first you hear that it is the first time uh, this woman is taking this um position it is the first time that a woman has uh, uh, broken this barrier. Mm. So, like I said today, I'm just I'm celebrating how victorious we've been come, and I'm celebrating how we've faced the challenges and we're able to overcome them. Beautiful stuff. Now, uh, as well, I'd want to know how has IYWD helped you to become the leader that you are today? Well, uh, this work, uh, organization actually gave me strength. They actually uh, gave me support to be courageous because, of course, you could be um, you could be a leader in a political party, but there are things that you have to shift off for you to stand out as a leader. 
you could be an activist and you think that being an activist you have to fight always mm. but i want to groom you to be a leader that you must be a leader who understands the environment that now i'm in this environment i have to act like this uh, a leader who is courageous to say out uh what she wants to say without fear a leader who is able to face challenges a leader who is able to cry out she has to because uh, i was we were given sessions it's time to to just uh call it out because you know the environment that we have in political parties especially when we are going to to elections is very rough mm-hmm. and it's very painful you go through a lot and you are hard spiritually you are hard physically you are hard even morally but uh when you go when we went there there were sessions where you could pour it out you could cry out and you after that you feel that i'm a uh, I, i'm now okay so i would want to say i it helped me even to build the person that i am today if you go to my political party and ask them how i was five years before they would tell that there was a very radical very mm. militant woman who, who didn't even want to listen and i never knew i would sit in parliament and listen through even when i'm being hacked mm. but i was molded i was built i was given courage i was given strength and Today I'm I'm a leader I am from the the government of Iowa and I very much appreciate them. Now there's that young lady that's looking at you and saying I want to be the next uh, um member of parliament I want to represent women at this huge platform. Honorable, what would be your message to that young woman who's listening right now in brief? My message would be follow your vision, stand out, be different to everyone else. and know exactly what you want if you know you want to be a member of parliament start uh, learning have your mentor have someone that you look up upon have someone to talk him uh, to talk to you have someone to mold you and follow your vision and uh, i can assure you that you can do it uh, because being young does not hinder you because when we were growing up we, we learned a lot of, i mean we had a lot about uh, we are leaders of tomorrow but the moment that we embrace We are leaders of today and we are leaders of now we then stood up and started acting so you are leaders of of now and you are a member of parliament and you are able and you can do it so stand up follow your vision and do it all right honorable someone comes through says hanzi ask the honorable member of parliament kuti can she support a woman from a different political party from hers i will ask you to to respond that in just uh, 30 seconds Yes I can because all we are women that's why you see even in parliament we have what is called women caucus where we discuss our things as women men from uh, different political parties but we work as one because our sole goal is having a woman who can, who can and a woman who is uh, successful so I can help anyone as long as you are a woman you are to me i don't care where you come from the church that you go to mm. the family that you go to but what we want is to have a successful woman there and say i was helped by this honorable to be what i am thank you so much honorable uh, we've run out of time but thank you so much for taking time to speak to us and happy international women's day to you thank you and same to you All right, I was speaking there to Honorable Lindi Wemaposa. I'm joined on the line as well by a young woman Constance Mushai she's in Bindura. Constance, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing absolutely well. Happy International Women's Day to you. What does this day mean to you, Constance? This is the day that women were born. I'm so excited and I'm very happy that we celebrate uh women's leadership in politics, women's leadership in economics, in social gatherings every way in our society. I'm so happy and I'm so excited. Beautiful. How are you celebrating this day as a young woman? today uh, as young women uh, although we had a gathering where we were sharing our challenges uh, our experiences especially during this uh, covid-19 uh, context where by women were failing to access social services and accessing roads accessing medical but today as we are celebrating we are just acknowledging those who have made it those who have assisted us to make it yeah, in life as women so today we are in Bindura we are gathering we are enjoying we are celebrating uh, we are sharing our 
our personal uh, experiences as young women in my centre. Great stuff as well. Why do you think that it's important for young women to actually take these leadership roles, Constance? Well, as young women, we are primary, we are primary consumers of social service delivery. We are the ones who are supposed to go to the hospital for maternity. We are the ones who look after children. We are the ones who look after men after all. According to these uh, African traditional religions, we are the ones who are online in terms of need. So as women, we consume so much of water. For example, how much uh, amount of water did you use in the morning as a woman? Hello? Great stuff. Uh, unfortunately, we've also run out of time, but thank you so much for taking time to speak to us and continue to, to take those leadership roles and uh, uh, change the narrative and continuously uh, look for those uh, opportunities and also encourage other young women to take some of these leadership roles. Thank you so much, Constance, uh, for joining us today. Okay, thank you so much. I just want to leave one word that uh, as women, we just need to strive until we get it. Uh, is the, the sky is the limit. We can make it one day. Great stuff. Thank you so much for, for speaking to us today. Uh, I'll also have Honorable Mary uh, Pangiti. She's on the line. Honorable, are you there? Nisho Magadi. Tinofara Magadi Kurisei Koko. Kurisei. Uh, Zua iri, raka kukoshere mupe nyu wenyu, uh, honorable. Raka kukoshere se mazimai. And timofara kutitarangari wa se mazimai, se mazimai pasiro se. And isusu tino play a big role. Being politics, ne kuzimba zedu za tino vana ma community za tino upa. And I also wish kuti zua iri, iri declare as a, a jayere kuti noto ita se woli jayere kurangari ya ne kutengibere la mazimai. Hey, was really Munzebe. Now, Honorable Pangit, and the other good Ziva Kuti, I, Y, W, D, Yakubatire, a teacher, son, now we are Kutunga Mira Semadzemai. Yakati Groomer, Vakati Mentor, Kusigata Sika, Patashika, Vakati Semadzemai, HD, Vakati South Kazigisirani, we are Kuru zero e kuru zise madzimai muzigaro 50-50. Uye, titunga miro makanzo za atiri kupale ya mendi. Tilege kungoti varume chedi nguo vano tunga mira. Asi madzimai vani kwa zero e kutunga mira u muzigaro iso iso. Uye, tilege le kuzigisirani. Ayo, watino tenda na mashoko. Now, uh, message ya mungada kusia kune vechidiki um, vaskana varu kukura. Nena uye kutunga mira ne kutunga zinjimbo iji. E, Ndeye kutichi. Ah, uh, ndi nanga pakuru dure kuti madzimai HD ki kunyangwe nevakuru nga varege ku kuitwa sexual harassment kuti vari kuda zvigaro the must stand firm kuzvimiririra sevanhu kadzi varege kuti arisirwa pasi zvisirwa dza zvichioma the make it in tikabatana ah uh, 10 by 2023 tinge tani 5050 mu parliament mu zvigaro mu macheti watefa ma business no, 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 no,